Hi everyone, John Murcott here, the other John from Hawk Search, but the one who unfortunately doesn't have the great radio voice. Uh, but I am hopefully going to have some interesting information here, which will address when I make a change inside of the workbench, how do I see that change on the site? Now, most of our customers, of course, when it's in production, they have processes involved, they've done integrations, etc., where all of this is automated. But when you're doing a quick start, you want to get a general sense how things work, well, then you're going to be doing it yourself and you just need to know what are those tools. So you may have noticed as you've been playing inside the workbench, when you go to a feature, for example, like fields and you want to add a field, you could probably imagine that the system would require a reboot or what we call a re-index to recreate the underlying index for ongoing uh, support. Uh, and you'll see this message in a couple of different places and even in other sections. So for example, let's say I want to add a synonym, then it will say, okay, you know, just giving you a heads up in order for that synonym in this case to take effect, you do need to run a re-index. So I know it's rebuilt or to do the re-index, what does that mean? So what we have here is a new little piece of documentation that we added to the quick start section. This is the developer portal you probably have used already. And what we have here is inside your sandbox is a couple of additional features. I made a change, now what? <laughs> so it just says like, well, what did you do? Did you add a field? Did you add a facet? In some cases, you are going to have to do a full re-index, which, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. But in other cases, you don't have to do a full uh, re-index. For example, let's say you change a facet setting. I don't want it to be a slider. I want it to be a, a, an option list, or I want the size of the facet for uh, my list of options to be smaller or bigger, or I want the count next to each one of the values in a facet. So in some cases, you just have to wait for the cache to reset. How long? Mm, one to five minutes. Uh, it's just because different settings are, are set slightly differently. And keep in mind, once again, this is on our sandbox or development environment. It's not production. So it's kind of configured to uh, have a higher or a longer amount of time when the cache refreshes. This is not the situation, for example, in production. So you can take a look at this list, see what you did. And if you have to do a re-index, you're going to do what I'm going to do right now. So you may remember when you were setting up your various... Uh, API calls inside of Postman that you always use the API key, of course. So in my API key, I'm just gonna make sure I have that. And I'm gonna go into Postman. And I just wanna take a look at what indexes are inside my account. Yep, I do have it set correctly. So if I hit send here, it goes and sees, okay, I have this one index that I created. And there is another feature. It's something you may have done already, but perhaps not. There is this concept of get current index because most customers do indeed have two indexes inside their Hawk search engine. One index is a backup, right? That's when you re-index or you're starting over. Uh, and the second index, the main index, the current index is what is live. So what I don't want to do is to take down my website. Now I just have a very simple website, which is probably something similar that you did, where I just have a little page here and I put it on FTP server and it kind of shows all of my products here. I don't want this search to come down when I re-index. So if I have another index in here, I may need to delete it. In this case, I don't, I'll get to it later, but there is an option called delete index. And guess what? You just pass it the name of the index, make sure that the API key is the same and it will delete that index. Now, since I already deleted that index and I only have one index, I am going to create a new index that will use all of those settings that are inside the workbench, the fields, the facets, the synonyms, the other things that said you need to rebuild an index. That's what I'm doing. When I create this index, once again, using that API key, when I rebuild this index, it is going to look at all those settings and everything else and say, I have a new index, I'm ready to go. So it does take a moment just thinking about all of the settings and everything else that I've done here. And it says, here it is. This is my new index. And just to kind of check, let's see, is it really there? It is. And also for fun, I am going to set this as the current index. And you'll see why in a second because you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. But remember, this is not deleting anything in the other index. It's just set 
saying this is going to be the live index. Now there's another feature, if you didn't see this before when you were creating your index originally, and maybe you said, no, when I create my engine, I just want you to pre-populate it. I apologize because this is the way it works. Just watch that part of Quick Start to understand how do I get data in. Once again, this is something that's typically just set up by customers and is not uh, done the way I'm doing it here. But I just want to get the products that are inside of uh, that little table that we created and get it into my account. So the first thing I do need to do here is say, that is the name of this new index. I am going to put all of the fields that are in my import file into this account. Now, what do I mean by that? If you remember, once again, I admit, if you had not done this part of the process, meaning um, import your data file, this may be a little bit curious to you. Well, what are you talking about? How did this content get in here? So this is the way the content got in. So if I come in here, you'll see this is indeed the data that we're getting into Hawk Search. It's a pretty simple uh, uh, set of data here. It has a unique key, it has a title, a SKU, a description, right? Uh, the image link, etc. These are all the fields that map to this. I'm passing in the key and the title and the SKU, etc. And inside of Postman, what's a really powerful function is that I can run this collection. So if I run this bulk product creation and I grab that file that I just downloaded here, I can now run this index. And what it's going to do, it's going to go through each one of the rows in that index and populate it. Now I know this is slow. It's slow, guess it's dev. Also our customers typically run this at 125 calls per call, if you will. The, the, imagine the load would be 125 separate or individual items at a time. Mine is simple, I'm just doing one at a time. But what's happening here is if I go back to my site and I hit refresh, you'll see it's just starting to build up again, right? I pointed the index to my new index and it's going slow, I got 21 in and I'll take a few minutes to, to get the rest of them in here. But the point is, this is how I can see, now it's up to 30, this is how the index is being repopulated. So if I change a setting inside of Hawk Search, like I added a field or something else, I do need to create that index so all those definitions and everything else gets into the underlying index. Then I populate that index with an import file. Luckily, Hawk Search is providing that as part of Quick Start. And that is how you re-index.